the opportunity that we have at this amazing inflection point in modern history is to be able to continually leverage a skill set, a mindset, and a tool set. And in this case, it's the tool set that will allow us to continually navigate a world of exponential change. So I'm going to run through nine ideas, and then I'm going to dive into two of them. We need to have a new model, what I call the next model, where it's a network of humans, what I call a work nest. And we soften the walls of the organization so that we have a flow of human capital. The old model I'm, I'm fond of saying was like a box and it was binary, either traditional employees or no employees. You're either employee or you're not. And, uh, and we manage that scarcity with hierarchy. Uh, and then along come all these use cases for work. You're, you're managing not just traditional employees, but contractors, subcontractors, ter- temporary workers, and so on, gig, cl- gig workers, cloud workers. And so that box is no longer sufficient to be able to contain all the different use cases for work. So the mindset is that the organization increasingly becomes essentially a work net. It becomes, it, you, we soften the walls of the organization so that we have the capacity to continually have a wide range of use cases. So this is, the, well, I guess, a picture for us to have in our mind. If, if you could wave a magic wand and you could have perfect knowledge of all the problems to be solved in your organization, that is all of the demand curve, both today and tomorrow, perfect knowledge of all the problems to be solved, and you had perfect knowledge and each individual in your organization had perfect awareness of their own skills, and you had the perfect process for continually helping those skills to dynamically bind around the problems, then you would have the operating system of the future for skills. And so that's really, I think, the mindset that I'd like to encourage is- Does that make sense to put what you will learn on a job description? Absolutely. But if there's a remember, range of use cases of work roles, right? And also for a younger person, for a younger worker, those Gen Z types, Absolutely. For an older worker that has a lot of experience behind them, that might be a demotivator because you, you do find, depending upon the work roles, that there's some people say, no, no, I just, I know how to do this. I'm, I, I don't need to keep on being trained to do new stuff. <laughs> so I would say you, you want to optimize for what you think of as the right fit, the right matching process. Uh, and, and in some cases, workers are going to love that. In other cases, workers are going to say that's, that's not actually a value they would consider that would make them choose that job over another. If you used a problem-focused job rec, in your experience, have you seen you get a higher list of interested candidates? First of all, I guess the question would be, what's optimal for the work role? Yep. And and yeah, so so the the, the short answer is yes, and you have to have a hiring process that actually is authentic (laughs) to that framing. What lessons can we learn from the WorkNet structure as it relates today to what some companies are struggling with in remote, hybrid, diversity. Are organizations resistant to this? What what can we, how can we really be all working together on the work net in a, in a combined yeah. goal, goal set here? Uh, if you could wave a magic wand and you could have the perfect operating system for flexible work, what would it look like? I've got a bunch of slides. You, you'll see when you look at the deck, but I talk about the six W's of work, what we do for work, where we do it, when we do it, with whom we do it, and so on. And you think of those as sliders, like depending upon the time of day and where you are and where you are in your project. And so so there are companies that have already put that operating system in place. 